Welcome back to another Best Wildcard Team video, this time ahead of double slash blank game week 25. And as we talked about in the transfer tips video, we have 12 teams doubling in double game week 29. And we've covered that in that video already. And we're going to do that here briefly as well. So just as a reminder, Bournemouth, Brighton, Leeds United, Nottingham Forest, Leicester City, Aston Villa, Chelsea, Liverpool, Manchester United, Brentford, West Ham United and Newcastle United will all have a double in gimmick 29. Some key kind of points to make is that Man City and Arsenal will not have a double, but Arsenal do face Leeds in gimmick 29, then have a bit of a turbulent fixture run after gimmick 30. So just bear all of that in mind. And that is also going to play a part in the construction of this wildcard team here today. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And if you end up enjoying this video be sure to drop it a like let's try to get this to over 300 and we're also looking to push on towards 20,000 subscribers and beyond but let's get straight into the video and go into the best wildcard team for double gimmick 25 there are two goalkeepers I would go for on the wildcard this week. It's a choice between Kepa Balaga or fellow Spaniard Raya, who is now the top scorer amongst goalkeepers so far this season. And Raya has a double in gimmick 27, as well as gimmick 29, but could blank in gimmick 28 on top of the blank that's already here in gimmick 25, whilst Kepa will play in 25 and 28 and has a double in gimmick 29. And I would slightly favour Kepa due to his bonus points and saves potential, but you could go for either one of them and you'll be completely fine. Then in terms of the backup, it's either Forster, who will be in goal for Spurs over the next six, seven weeks. If you just want a kind of save and forget option until the end of the season, then Ward is just fine. There's only a 0.1 million difference anyway, but Forster is the slightly better option right now if you are looking for that second goalkeeper option to fill in for you in all these game weeks as well. So let me know your thoughts in terms of the goalkeepers and every single position we're going to cover in this video. But ultimately, I would go for these two goalkeepers even though the likes of Raya, Nick Pope when he comes back from suspension, he's a good option. And a few others like Leno also look enticing. I'd probably go for either Kep or Raya. And my current preference is with Ariza Balaga. We have quite a few changes in the back line. So we typically go for an Arsenal defender and Kieran Tripp here. But the other three slots have changed quite drastically. We've gone for Tarkovsky, who doesn't blank in gimmick 28, facing Chelsea away. And he also has this double in 25. Doesn't blank in any of the gimmicks coming up as well. Then you've got Kilman too, who's got a double here, albeit not that great against Fulham and Liverpool away. But I would not be surprised if Wolves kept the clean sheet away to Fulham. Maybe it was a nil-nil draw. That is definitely on the cards. Sinchenko is my current preference amongst the Arsenal defenders, but to be fair, you can make a case for any single one of them. Gabriel, Saliba, Ben White, I covered all of them in the transfer tips video, discussing the differences between all four of them, and I actually still like Ben White a lot, but Sinchenko might be the safer option, and as a result he is in this team as well, and Trent Alexander-Arnold has this double, some great fixtures for the next four or five game weeks, but still, in game weeks like game week 26, he faces Man United, and you could feasibly bench him, and Liverpool still look vulnerable defensively, despite their recent improvements, conceding five to Real Madrid in the Champions League after going 2-0 up and Kieran Trippier is the best defender in the game period once Bruno Guimaraes and Nick Pope are back I expect Newcastle to bounce back as a result and for Kieran Trippier to keep clean sheets in gimmicks such as 27 when he faces Wolves and he has a double in 29 even though it might not be the best looking double in the world so this is the back five and as the weeks go by you can make a few tweaks here and there and until gimmick 38 you'd want the likes of Luke Shaw but over the next four or five game weeks Luke Shaw has a blank in 25 some poor fixtures until his double in gimmick 29 so I think you can go by without him for now and you can ultimately start making some tweaks as the weeks progress and as the season evolves and we get to more doubles and blanks later in the season. I haven't changed my stance all week. There are three midfielders that I'd highly recommend for Gimme 25 and also potentially in the long term, but then it becomes a bit tricky with the fourth and fifth midfielder. So Odegaard and Saka offer extremely good value and they are potentially season keepers despite no double in Gimme 29, but they do not blank in Gimme 28, which is a huge plus. And if you're not looking to use the free here in that blank game week, then a double or triple up in Arsenal is definitely highly recommended on a wild card or with free transfers with this huge double in mind as well in 25. And Saka is the informed player right now. He is the one I definitely go for, but Odegaard has the highest ceiling with bonus points and he can also get more double digit returns as a result. Mohamed Salah will be my Liverpool player of choice. Despite Liverpool's struggles, he's still doing pretty well in the last two game weeks. Also scoring and assisting against Real Madrid. He's having a great Champions League campaign and it might come to an end very soon, but he's done a great job for them in Europe. And then we've gone for Rashford, who I definitely keep. It's not worth selling and then buying him back you could do that to be fair 
but I would just keep him, bench him, and then you can just bring him into your team again in 26 and 27, even though the chances of a blank in game at 28 are very high. And the same goes for Mitoma, who has a double in 27 and 29, but also some blanks in the next three or four game weeks as well. But you could easily bench him, and that's why we've got a good squad here to fill in. And you can sometimes play a back five, a back four, three forwards, you name it, but you can be in a good position. You've got a flexible squad, and you don't have to worry if the likes of Rashford or Matoma have a blank game week like in 25 or 28. So this is the midfield five. You've got some good captaincy options for this double game week as well. And you've got a good structure and you won't have to book in too many transfers, but especially when we're talking about the midfield. We have a very different looking front three. The ever-present Erling Haaland is here, but we've got Darwin Nunez and Oli Watkins. To have both of them, two strikers that I don't really trust, you know, it's quite strange, but Watkins has a lot going for him. He's in great form, scoring in four games in a row. He doesn't blank in 25 or 28. He's also got a double in 29. There's so much to like with Oli Watkins, and there are some good fixtures there for Aston Villa, who have been vulnerable, especially defensively, but they still score a lot of goals, and they can be a nuisance to any team, including Man City or Arsenal. Darwin Nunez has been in great form. He scored a fantastic goal against Real Madrid to put Liverpool 1-0 ahead. And he has been doing pretty well in the Premier League in the last two game weeks. Also a really good goal against Newcastle. And I don't really trust him still. And is he someone I would like to have until the end of the season? Not necessarily, but there's a lot of boxes he ticks. He doubles in 25 and 29. There is the possibility that Liverpool don't blank in game week 28. And it all depends on Fulham and how they do in the FA Cup. But I would go for this front three right now, despite obviously everything I've said about Harry Kane he's probably the second or third best FPL option in the game but he also doesn't have any doubles and you've got all these players here that have the doubles no blanks and stuff like that which ultimately are really important when you're building this wildcard team at this point in time so I've gone for Darwin Nunez, Watkins and Haaland and you could feasibly bench some of them at times and you won't really have too many benching dilemmas but you also have that depth if needed and you need someone to come off the bench and also to fill in for injured players or anything else that may arise in the next few weeks or months so that is the 50 man squad we've gone for let's now go to fpl.team and show you the lineup the captaincy and visualizing future game weeks too this will be one of the easier game weeks to determine the starting 11 because we have three blank game week players on the bench. The starting 11 speaks for itself, although you could go for Forster over Kepper is a Balaga. You might give Spurs the edge in that matchup, and that's completely understandable. And that's why I talked about the possibility of including Raya in your wildcard squad, starting Forster, then bringing Raya back in your starting 11 for future game weeks. We've gone for Trent, Kilman, Sinchenko, and Tarkovsky as the back four. We've gone for Salah, Sack, and Odegaard as the only three midfielders you need for game week 20 and then Haaland, Darwin Nunez and Ollie Watkins up front. A very solid lineup, but some of you may not be able to afford this. And if that's the case, then I would also consider possibilities such as no Trent Alexander-Arnold and possibly downgrading him, keeping someone like Luke Shaw and then as a result, maybe going for Andres Pereira instead of Mitoma, having that starting playing game at 25, that full 11 if you wish. But I don't even mind having 9 or 10 players in game at 25, to be quite frank. I don't think you need to necessarily have that starting 11, but with this wildcard squad, you have 11 players starting in game at 25. So let's show you each single one of the upcoming game as well, what the starting 11 would be, and some proposed transfers and ideas for you. So even if you're wildcarding right now, I've provided some transfer plans to bring in some more double game at 27 players, as well as those for double game at 29. For Gaming 26, you could roll the transfer, be more prepared in double Gaming 27 with two free transfers at your disposal, going for Kepa Rizabalaga in goal, Trippier, Sinchenko and Tarkovsky as the back three, a midfield five which speaks for itself in Matoma, Salah, Saka, Odegaard and Rashford and a front two of Haaland and Oli Watkins. The Liverpool players there on your bench facing Man United and also Kilman. So this is looking very solid as well and you could also even start Forster over Kepa once again, but this is a pretty solid starting 11 you've also got maybe captaincy dilemma between the likes of Saka Erling Haaland and possibly Rashford I think also Salah could be in the equation but I would mainly go for one of Saka Rashford or Haaland and that looks like a really good starting 11 and also let's not forget double gimmick 27 where we'd actually have four double gimmick players and also a very solid base for the starting 11 as well so let's go into that right now
Gaming 27, you can use your two free transfers on defenders, bring in Pervis Stupinian and Ben Mee for Trent Alexander-Arnold and Kilman, and have four double gaming players, two Brighton and two Brentford players. I think that would be a solid base there for that double gaming. Kepa is a bargain goal, a back three, a midfield five, and also a front two with Sinchenko, Watkins and Tarkovsky on the bench. And that would maybe be a bit problematic. You wouldn't want to bench the likes of Sinchenko or Ollie Watkins, but I think this is the right way to go and you would have a really solid base and also a great chance of accumulating a lot of points. The captaincy, you could probably go for someone like Matoma or Ivan Tony instead of Bakayo Saka here. So that would be a tricky situation there, picking between Matoma and Tony. But if not, you could just go for a single gimmick player like Haaland or Saka. I don't think that's necessarily a bad decision as well. So now let me show you briefly gimmick 28 as well as gimmick 29 before wrapping up this video. Without making any further transfers, you would have seven players available with confirmed fixtures in Blank Gaming 28, which includes Kepereza Balaga, Kieran Trippier, Sinchenko, Tarkovsky, Bakao Saka, Odegaard, and Oli Watkins. The rest could have a fiction gimmick 28 but it depends on the FA Cup and ultimately you would expect the likes of Estupinian, Matoma, Rashford and Haaland to definitely blank in gimmick 28 but let's wait and see you never know in football but you would have seven confirmed players with this wildcard squad and two proposed transfers in gimmick 27 so you'd be well set up for gimmick 28 as well that blank gimmick you don't necessarily need to use the free hit but you could do so if you wish and that could maybe be the way for you so this wildcard is flexible you don't necessarily need to follow a particular pattern or use chips in a certain way. It gives you the options and flexibility. The last week I want to show you is Double Gaming 29 without making any further transfers, which of course you have two free transfers available if you follow this pattern and the transfers I've shown you. And you would have a free for free formation. You've got the likes of Odegaard and Sinchenko on your bench, which I'm not very happy with to be quite frank with you, but this is looking pretty solid as well. You don't need to make the same moves as I have shown you in Gaming 27. You can go about things your own way. You use chips in gimmick 28 or whatever you fancy to be honest and in terms of the captaincy although this is not really too relevant right now I think Marcus Rashford will be more suitable than Bakayo Saka who only has a single gimmick so let me know your thoughts on these plans on this wild card the flexibility of it and what you're planning to do with the wild card and all the other chips such as the free here and thank you very much for watching this video if you enjoyed it or found it useful then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new let's try to get this video to over 300 likes let's keep on pushing towards 20,000 subscribers and beyond you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram Dylan RCM and you can also become a patron or a channel member patreon.com slash RCM you can become a member for as little as three pounds per month for exclusive early access to my videos and a lot of other perks at your disposal also check out the discord server the FPL league and all the links in the description below I'd encourage you to do so thank you very much for watching take care enjoy the football good luck for gaming 25 and the rest of the season and I'll see you next time